what is good? I am good, and I hope you are good, because that's how we all should and would. If you could, then you would be good. So, I have just had a revelation the other night. Um, it was one that I knew was going to happen. I kept thinking it had already happened, but it hadn't, because my addiction was just still there. It was still too, too prevalent. It was too um, uncontrollable, you know? This uh, addiction that I and we all share of food, of uh, needing, thinking that we need to eat. And even when we don't, even when we know that we don't need to eat, we still can't get over the addiction. It's still overwhelming. It's more overwhelming than most drugs. It's more so more overwhelming than alcohol, which in a way is worse than most drugs. And I mean, yeah, I mean, it's stronger than alcohol addiction. It's stronger than a, almost as strong as a cigarette addiction, if you think about it. Um, I kept thinking that I was going to break the mold, but I couldn't. Um, each time that I broke a fast, and right before breaking the fast, I would always be feeling great, of course, you know, feeling great, but I decided, ah, I'm going to break it for whatever reasons, and a couple of the times were fine, but most of the times I just regretted it pretty quickly, you know, I should have kept going, I felt better before, but this time was much different, was way, way different, um, the food actually did not feel well at all, it didn't feel good at all, it didn't settle well, and I, it was only about two days or so, up to that point, so it wasn't very long, but still two days not eating, you know, is maybe long for some of you guys. Um, but what I felt, um, yeah, it was different. Um, it didn't, so basically, I, uh, after that, instead of doing what I would typically do the past few times, and when I broke a fast being just, ha you know, having the addiction and wanting to snack, you know, every couple hours, sometimes every hour or so, um, that didn't, that wasn't there, so I have got past that, and I didn't know if I would ever, I, I, I thought this was how it go, but I wasn't too sure, I thought, it was like, is this addiction always going to be this strong, am I going to get more used to it, but what basically happened is just, now the food doesn't even taste good, it doesn't, it tastes very okay-ish, like, bland. Um, I don't get the same satisfaction as I used to get. Um, I'm not, when I, I feel filled up, I more feel filled up in a bad way. Um, my body doesn't want it or need it anymore. It's, it knows how it feels, my body knows how it feels, how good it feels to be without food, especially when, since the body has been cleaned out of impurities and toxins and poisons and parasites, or at least down to a very minimal level at that at this point in my life my body knows how much better it feels without food without having to use all its energy to process this to do all the things it needs to do to digest food and yeah it's um this is the first time so i'm glad, i'm happy just to say that and i am going to make a big commitment um i don't like making promises because that kind of keeps you, you know, binded in some ways, but I think I am going to go on for a while now, um, I'm going to, I'm not going to do a particular fast for a period of time or a long time or for the rest of my life, but for now, it's just going to be liquids, it's going to be distilled water, pee, some juice once in a while, but juice will be kept, try to be kept at a minimal level. I won't try to overdo the juice because it's a lot of sugar in juice and uh, you don't need that. You don't need all that. You, you, um, you need a little maybe sometimes here and there, and especially as this transition is going forth or whatever. But, you know, those, that stuff in your body that's not supposed to be there 
well, I don't have much of it now, but if you were to, if you were fasting and you hadn't been fasting before, you'll be wanting to be drinking you'll be wanting to be drinking juice the entire time because that's what the parasites want. They want to feed on that, you know, they want to feed on something and crave sugar too. It's not just solid food, you know, it's the other parts, you know, the other things about um, that go into the body, you know, not you know, it doesn't have to be just solid food. Sometimes a fast is better done without juice. If you're really, really trying to clean the body, that's the best way to do it. A distilled water and or urine fast. And then once you're up to it and learn more about, just like I'm trying to do, I haven't taken the time recently, but I've been wanting to learn more about dry fasting because it's a lot of very interesting stuff um, that I want to look into and find out and read about. Um, there's some people who swear by it. Um, it's done a lot differently. You have to be a lot more cautious when you do it. You know, um, There's definitely some guidelines and rules that should be followed, even though guidelines and rules are kind of lame in general. When you're doing something like dry fasting, that's you got to follow the... Uh, the right protocol but um so i'll eventually venture into that i definitely don't need to drink as much uh, liquids as i used to before ever starting urine therapy and then later on doing the fasting um i don't sweat as much i don't need to drink that much I, i've gone on like long 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 runs and wasn't thirsty even afterwards uh even went somewhere else and did some more activities and still didn't really need to drink anything. I wasn't sweating like nearly at all, as nearly as much as I used to. Um, and don't need to drink as much water. I mean, I'm hydrated. I I'm stay hydrated. And I, I, I really um, jot that down to... Um, not showering, which I'll get into another time as I'm coming up on a year pretty soon. But um, yeah, there's uh, there's I really think there's something that in the water in our daily process or one or two times a day that we think we need to bathe in this in in uh, altered water that we are too stupid enough to keep getting in every day and not really investigate well what's going on with that I really believe or my theory at least is that that's keeping the toxins that's keeping the toxins from un, not from not being able to be released through our pores and through our skin through our sweat um, so yeah because um, when I first stopped showering I went through a period the first few months of uh, once in a while I'd really really smell and that's you know what is that what's what what's that smell what is that what's the source of it where why is it smell if something smells it's got to be something behind the smell what is it it's toxins coming out of the body you're sweating out gross crap gross crap from your body that's one way the toxins evacuate the other way is through your crap when you when you take your shit, you breathe also toxins out. You, you, um, your urine has a very, very, very minimal amount of toxins, and, um, just enough to make a great, strong immune system. The perfect amount, actually. Um, your urine is custom tailored to be the most perfect, optimal, custom medicine slash preventative medicine um, that you could. Have ever concocted, it's, you know, not even the top scientists could have made, you know, otherwise there'd be a product out that was as good as urine, but there isn't, it's not even close. Um, so anyways, the ways that our poisons and toxins evacuate the body, one is that it's, it's not just in our digestive system, I mean, there's toxins and, and poisons throughout your body that get stored based on what's going on with it. If you, if your body can't evacuate particular if you have too much toxicity going on and your body can only handle so much and do so much it's stuff is going to be stored in different places and be uh, be in different places in your body and we're all different we all have our, our the story of how everything has got into our body and how our bodies have been shaped to the way they currently are is that each individual unique story you know so 
everyone's different. Everyone's going to have different amounts of uh, uh, toxins in their body in different places and stuff. But it's not being... Um, um, what I'm trying to say is it's not being cleaned out the way it's supposed to because of the shower. You're not cleaning yourself. You're keeping yourself dirtier on the inside and plus putting in much more, a lot more crap into your body because of the toxins that are in the water and the inorganic minerals and crap and different compounds and fluoride and chlorine and all of that other good stuff that you don't want to be saturating your body. You're just constantly adding more, adding more to where you're not going to be able to ever get clean. There's always going to be, it's always going to be put back. And there's something else about that, that it, about the theory that I have that it's, it's being, it's being prevented, you know, it's, um, it's preventing us from cleaning ourselves to being really clean. We think we go into the shower to get clean. We're actually preventing ourselves from getting clean. And like I said, for the first few months, I, there would be times where I'd stink up a storm, but then eventually, yeah, that's the trial through stinkiness right there. You get through a few months though, and then guess what? You stop smelling. You, let's say, uh, let's say the level you were at was a hundred or whatever of the amount of odor that you would, uh, uh, be released or emit it, uh, emit per day when you stop showering for a few months and do it the way do do it exactly the way I did or or you could do it better I'm sure but I I did a pretty good job I think um, I'm down to like less than five per, I, I admit about five per, less than five percent of what I used to admit sometimes uh, if there's no air, like if you're if you have your shoes on for too long, there's nothing you could do in, about like you know having a little bit of uh, stinky socks. Um, but typically after a day, my socks don't even smell ever. Um, armpits are gonna smell a little bit. You know places that don't get oxygen and uh, don't get much air, you know flow. That's gonna be bacteria. It's because we wear clothes, you know. I'm sensitive to the cold, so I wrap. I go. I wrap up. Luckily, it's going to be nice and warmer soon, soon, so I don't have to wear a shirt all the time. I can wear just wear also board shorts to get a little more airflow and everything. Not have to wear shoes and socks as as much. I often go to the beach and yeah. Um, the only thing, the only times that I smell is when I've had something on too long that's uh, not getting any airflow to it. Any um, if I was just basically naked at all times, then yeah, there would be almost virtually no smell to come out of me at all. But that's the point I've gotten to, and I think that's a point that anyone could get to if they wanted to, if they really wanted to. Do you want to be a slave to the shower all your whole life? Do you want to smell? Um, because when you go in there, you're not you're not stopping yourself from smelling you're just prolonging you know and keeping your keeping the toxins to consistently stay in the body and adding more and more and more each time you go in so what is that what happens after that well toxins eventually turn into whatever illness that you will have in your future in or in your old age or near future or towards the end of your life which ultimately that may ultimately cause you to die or just be in worse health to get something else which will lead to your early death and not a very fulfilling life I mean as far as you might you might live a decent life and all by regular society standards you worked and re for 30 years and retired and had kids and have a family and um, have a house and this and that that's okay, but there's a lot more. There's a lot more to experience. There's a lot more. To, um, it just hasn't been. It's just been kept from us, you know. The powers of our mind, the powers of our body, how divine we are, what we could actually do. Um, yeah, our path towards ascension. Um, that path is a, a very, very fun one. It's not boring. The things that, you know, I do may not sound like fun 
who wants to stop eating or who wants to you know smell for a few months while not showering and a lot of the things I do don't sound fun but your mind goes through so many of the most clearly enlightening enlightening moments that you will ever experience and that's partially because your body and your mind and your brain on the physical and non-physical side everything is working better everything's in tune your body's working better your blood's flowing better and that's your life force that's your energy right there on another level that's a whole nother thing right there um yeah your your gland in your head in the center of your head the pineal gland shaped like a little pine cone right there well guess what the fluoride's been doing that you've been showering in and you've been drinking in the that's in your tap water and in lots of your bottled water don't forget that just because it's bottled water doesn't mean it's distilled and doesn't mean that it might not doesn't have fluoride it's been proven that there's fluoride in many bottled waters but anyways that what that does is crystallize and calcify your pineal gland which is now very small based on our um, genetics and based on all the crap we've put in our body and 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 on and leaving it unused uh, except when we were kids when we had imaginations and were more creative when this pineal gland starts to be activated again you will have a good time you won't even have to be doing much you could just live inside your head and be so happy and have the most intriguing thoughts the most vivid imagination you can hear so creativity comes back you become the person that you were meant to be you were supposed to be like how you were with a kid but a lot smarter that's not the way that people mature in society isn't smart isn't mature that's not mature you people have gone way too far from themselves they're not the, their true selves anymore there's only a sliver left that you could gain it back but you need to know the tricks and you need to know how you are being tricked once you figure that out then you could start your plan you know it's very simple anyways gone on way too long thanks for listening and i'll have more to come trust me on that one